for today's session. Today, we are pleased to welcome again Mr. Khaled bin Zawi, and he'll be sharing with us his expert opinion on petrophysics. Mr. Khaled is geoscientist, Saudi oil company, 2015 present. He's a lead geomodular Husky Energy Canada from 2011 to 2015. Also, he's a senior geologist, petrophysicist in Schlumberger in North Africa, Middle East, and Canada from 2006 to 2011. He is a graduate from ENHC Algeria PSC Petroleum Geology 1997. And he has four months geostatic citation, University of Alberta 2008. Now, I'd like to remind you to leave your questions during or at the end of the session in the chat box below, and please keep it ethical and professional. With that, I ask you to give your full attention to Mr. Khalid bin Zawi. Mr. Khalid, the mic is yours. Thank you very, very much. Share my screen. Like Do you see my screen, please, guys? Yeah, it's clear. Excellent. So, so as we uh, have the, the, we will do we'll try to uh, recap the first two days where we did petrophysics. So we will do a, a ten minutes just to review what we did, and we'll focus on the most important thing for reservoir engineer. Okay. As a SPE or reservoir engineer, we are not expected to be expert in everything but you are expected to understand what's happening and you use the data for your daily uh, uh, work. So as a, a simple exercise that is done by a reservoir engineer or petroleum engineer is you drill well today and you have all the data, all the logs, and you wanna just, uh, your boss asks you where we should perforate the well. Because when we drill, we case, and after that, we want to drill and produce oil, okay? We'll take a simple example that we used for the last two days, and you will see how simple uh, to do your uh, quick look. So the word quick look is used by petrophysicists, which mean a very quick interpretation. We don't worry too much about the number. We uh, worry more about the quality of the interpretation. Uh, qualitatively, are we good or not? So let's take this example. This is the same well we uh, played with for the last couple of days. Let's say your boss give you this set of logs and said, uh, tell me where we should perforate, okay? And our objective is to perforate and produce oil, okay? So uh, don't worry about too many logs. You see in this graph, for example, in the first track is the depth. After that, the green was gamma ray. You have the caliper here, uh, the SP log, the second uh, group, you have the resistivity tools, which is the deep resistivity and the micro resistivity or the very shallow to the well bore. The third track where you have the porosity logs. Here, for example, you have the natural density and you have this black curve, it's always there. This one is correction of the density. Uh, don't worry about it, it's already applied. Uh, we use it in Petrovisic to see the quality of the log itself. So is it too big correction? Even it's applied, maybe we should not use the densities this interval. As we said yesterday, because of the washout or the caliper or the cavity that exists in the world. So uh, the challenge is where we should perforate. That's the simple question, okay? Uh, the answer, inshallah, will be very, very uh, easy. Uh, Okay, we have the Doni, for example, Society of Service, for example, Schumberger and Baker. We have the log gamma ray, the log of the resistivity, and the log of the porosity. Okay? The line in the red is the correction that is always in the curve of density. The Society of Service is always applied to the correction before they take the Doni. But if they don't apply it, they see it, they see it, they see the correction is large. دير حسابك باللي بالك الدونسيتي تاعك ماهيش مليح، اوكي؟ هنا لوبجيكتيف تاع ليكزيرسيس الشيف تاع قال لك في وي كان الانترفال ولا كان كان البروفوندور نبيرفوريو باش نبروديزيو الوي، هذا هو ليكزومبل عندك لي دوني انت ريزيرفوار انجينير قول لي وين بلاصه نبيرفوريو. هو ذا اكزيرسايس يوجلي از فيري كويك 
because when you drill the well, you get your logs, you need to perforate to save time and cost on the drilling rig, okay? So uh, this quick look, it shouldn't take you too long. It's not days, it should be in a couple hours, you decide and you tell your drilling people where they should perforate. And the exercise has to be rapid, because the rig rate is in the sonar, the sonar is in the البريت على الصوندا كل يوم غالي لازم ديسيدي رابيد مو لي زون دروا وين نديرو بيرفوراسيون تاعنا وين بوجي وي ويل تيك ذا اكزرسايز فيري سلولي اول توجذر سو وير تو بيرفوريت از فيري سيمبل اوكي وان سكند وير تو بيرفوريت از فيري سيمبل وي شود بيرفوريت ان كلين جود بوروزيتي اند فيري لو واتر ساتيريشن دوز ار ثري فيري سيمبل كلين ريزرفوار جود porosity and uh, very low water saturation. We want to uh, perforate where we have oil saturation the highest. Very simple three, okay? The assumption we have is that our uh, oil, when we do quick look, especially for oil, don't worry about the number too much. Your density of oil is 0 0.8, fine. Assume it's one. It will not change the definition. We assume the density of oil is one, the density of the water is one, okay? And we know that the gamma ray for the quartz, uh, it's around 25. And the density of the quartz is 2.65, okay? So, and the uh, Roby log, as we said, for a clean formation, the Roby is equal to the row matrix multiplied by one minus porosity multiplied uh, plus the Roby of the liquid multiplied by the porosity. Okay, and let's say our company, good porosity definition is 15%. Let's say our company, the definition is 15% and above, that's good porosity, 15% and below, it's not that good porosity. So if you put 15%, very simple, you take this formula here, let me get my laser. So you see this formula for clean sandstone, very simple, if we take 15 here, and you put it in this place. So the density of the matrix is 265 multiplied by 0 0.85 plus the density of the liquid, because we said oil and water more or less is very quickly, it's one, plus multiplied by 15%. If you take a calculator, it will give you 2.40 something, okay? Take it easy, let's say 2.4. So the density at 2.4, if we are in clean sand full of water, that one porosity is equal to 15%. So where is the good porosity? If the density goes high or the density goes low? So the, the, the porosity, it goes good porosity if the density goes down. So if we read on the Roby log, a value less than 2.4, that's a good porosity, okay? If we assume that the, the formation is clean. Uh, عندنا الريزرفوار تاعنا هنا لي ارجيل غريزو اوكي ارجيل غريزو لا دونسيتي تاع الماء ايتيغا 1 ولا دونسيتي تاع الويل 0.8 ولا 0.9 حنا ناخذوها ا آه. لا دونسيتي تاع الماء ولا دونسيتي تاع الويل ا آه ا آه. كيف كيف اوكي والريزرفوار تاعنا فيه الارجيل والغري اوكي الجامري تاع الارجيل تاع الغري ايتيغا 25 اوكي و لا دونسيتي تاع الغري ستوندار 2.65 لوتي تاعنا لا دونسيتي روبي في الكلي في الريزرفوار بروبر الفورميل تاعو سام الروبي تيقال الروبي تاع الماتريس ا موان بوروزيتي بلوس لا دونسيتي تاع الفلويد اللي هي ا فوا بوروزيتي حنا لا كومباني تاعنا تقول لك البوروزيتي مليحه ا 15% بلوس اوكي نحطوا ال 15% هذه في الفورميل تاع لا دونسيتي باسكو حنا على فهم مناش حابين نديرو انتربيتاسيون تاع لا دونسيتي حابين نشوفو رابيدمون وين المليح وين الخايب من الريزيرفوا كي تحط ال 15% وتحط 2.65 تعطيك لا دونسيتي تاعك 2.4 اوتوماتيكمون من 2.4 لا دونسيتي وتهبط لا دونسيتي تعطيني بوروزيتي مليح اوكي ليتس ريمبر ذيس اوكي فيري سيمبل سو ذيس از ذا سيت اوف لوجز The same, you have a density, you have, sorry, you have the gamma ray log, you have the density log, this is the caliper just to tell you where you are, and this is the resistivity log. So remember, the first criteria is clean reservoir. 
low gamma ray content. Okay? You run an equation. You said if my, what I call clean, if the gamma ray is less than 25, that's clean. If the gamma ray more, make it zero. So the green intervals here are where your reservoir is clean. Now I'm the reservoir proper. The gamma ray تاعي تحت ال 25 reservoir proper. فوق ال 25 ما نحوسش عليها، اوكي؟ وتحت ال 25 هادو لي زون دروا فيرت، اوكي؟ عندك لي زون دروا فيرت، ذيس جرين اريا، اول اوف ات از جرين ساند، يو سي هير جرين ساند، كلين ساند، كلين ساند، كلين ساند. ذاتس كرايتيريا نمبر 1. And you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. An Excel sheet you can do it, okay? Or usually as a petrophysicist or geologist, we draw a line. We do a straight line here and that and we color with the pencil. اوكي احنا لي جيولوجيست نديرو لين فيرتيكال ونكولوريو لي زون دروا لي الجاما ري تاعي تحت لا لين بلا كولور جون اللي هي الجري فوقها اون سون فوت ما نحتاجوهاش شيلي ولا ارجيلو ولا ارجيل توتال السكند كرايتيريا از جود بروزيت ريمبر اور كومباني كرايتيريا از 15% سو اف وي هاف كلين سان از 2.4 So, oh, sorry, this is a typo here. It should be row B, this one, yeah? Let me, let me just, let me just correct it. Sorry, yeah. Row B, it should be less than uh, 2.4. And you see row B here, less than 2.4. And give me this one. So let's stop a little bit. It give me a good reservoir here in front of the shape. And as I told you, told you before, the caliper, is hurting my density plus this equation here if the grid the sandstone is clean sandstone without shape okay that's why don't worry keep it like this we will explain how to use later on okay على هكا لا دونسيتي نتاعي راه تعطيني دي ريزولطا ماهمش مليح. بلوس اون فاس لي زارجيل هادو مثلا تعطيك باللي مليحه دي فوا حنا هاد الفورميل ابليكابل سولمون كي يعود الكري بروب بصح با دو بروبليم خلو الانتربيتاسيون كيما راها ودوك نوريكم كيفاه تيليزوها اوكي؟ ليتس اكسبت ذا انتربيتاسيون از از اند دونت وري وي ويل اكسبلين هاو تو يوز. ذا ثيرد كرايتيريا وي سيد كلين Good porosity and good oil saturation. Good oil saturation here is tricky, okay? Uh, the cutoff is not straightforward. How you decide on the cutoff on resistivity, and please guys, we always take the deep resistivity. It's very simple. You look to your resistivity where it's high, and you look to resistivity where it's low in front of a clean sand, and you take your cutoff in between, okay? Don't worry, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's one. I saw a lot of area where it's one, especially when the water is saline, is one ohm above, you have oil, definitely, okay? But for your case, don't worry, look just here. You see this resistivity, this resistivity here, put your cutoff in between. Okay, for the saturation wheel, on it is resistivity, okay? Two unit is resistivity, one ten, D. LLD, ELD, or RSD, or resistivity. The cutoff or the value of the resistivity that I have on the wheel is the same as the show and another show. Okay? It's not always 4 or 5. The method is to select the cutoff of the resistivity. The resistivity is the same. You can see the resistivity is high. And then you can select the resistivity. This is the resistivity. The resistivity is the same. You can select the cutoff between this value and this value. وتنقدر تلعب معاه با دو بروبليم فور ذيس اكزرسايز اي توك فور اي ترايد 3 4 5 6 اي ترايد 4 اوكي فور ات جيف مي ذيس وان انترفال از جود ذيس انترفال از جود اوكي ليت مي جاست سو وات از ماي بيست ريزرفوار ماي بيست ريزرفوار اف اول اوف ذيم ايكوال تو 1 اف ذا كلين فور شيل از 1 ذا بوروزيتي جود از 1 And the resistivity good is one, all of them one. In an equation, you just multiply this one by this one by this one, it gives you this guy here. And here you see your best location where you perforate. Okay? You perforate, you have the top section and you perforate the lower section. Okay? This small 
thin reservoir. Usually we don't perforate because sometimes it's, it's not, uh, we don't have a lot of oil. So, and Kalafa, Lizondro, we will perforate, Lazem Tkun had a ah, who had a ah, who had a ah. Ila habit dira will calculate this, will have a lixal, had a multiply, multiply, dozier, multiply, troisium, topic hat. Lizondro perforation, you do bainin clair, a e do. L'endroit de Fougani, l'endroit de Tani, des fois les endroits où les rares, les very thin intervals, ils ont un perforé parce que c'est rare, mais ils ont un chiffre. Ok? This is what we call a quick look analysis that, in my opinion, you guys, you should know about. Petrophysics, yes, you can skip here and there, but this one you should know and you should understand and use in your day. And by this, I conclude the first two days and uh, the recap and the revision and hope, inshallah, you understand what we did for the two days. After uh, petrophysics is done, petrophysics is a single well-born interpretation. Our objective is to understand the whole reservoir in 3D, okay? And that one only it's uh, possible if you do geomodeling for your reservoir or just or geostatistical modeling. Uh, for your reservoir or 3D geological modeling or some people they call it static modeling. Okay, so you know that the modeling, geological modeling, 3D modeling, all they are the same uh, meaning, which is 3D geostatistical modeling is building a numerical uh, model that represents the reservoir in 3D. So everywhere it tells you how much porosity, how much saturation you have. The workflow is the same in all the software, okay? Even I'm showing you here in the Petrel, but the workflow is all the same. Start by collecting the data, correcting the data, and after that you go to the discipline. Seismic, which is the seismic interpretation, because it helps a lot. Uh, seismic exists everywhere, it helps a lot. The wells exist every thousand or 2000 meter, so the wells are more accurate, but we don't have a lot. The seismic is less accurate, but we have everywhere, it's very, it's very, very helpful, the seismic. After that, you have uh, the, the well correlation or the geological uh, mapping. So the geologists will go and pick all the tops, the top of the reservoir, the base of the reservoir, the thickness of the reservoir, the change in the reservoir by your geologist. After that, you start your structural modeling. If you have fault, yes, if not, you do your uh, grading. The grading is simply you take your reservoir horizontally and you split it into cubes, okay? On the Wiesler Reservoir horizontal, the, the cube, okay? Uh, these cubes, the size, I'll talk about it later on. After that, you take layering, and the layering is very simple. This one is horizontal splitting, this one is vertical splitting. So the horizontal, the reservoir, the cube, a 100 meter or 200 meter, and then vertical, the layer of the reservoir, each two or three meters, <coughs> vertical. This one with this one will give you 3D small cubes, what we call the cell. A cell is the small portion of the reservoir that we will calculate the property for each cell. Okay, uh, we do the phases modeling. Sometimes it's optional, but it always helps to uh, propagate your petrophysical modeling. The phases are the geological uh, rock type. After that, we do petrophysical modeling, which include porosity, uh, modeling, saturation modeling, permeability modeling, all this stuff. Here, your geomodel is finished. But what, after the model is finished, you can extract a lot of information. So there is a lot of porosity, permeability, or water saturation. The modeling tag, normal and practical, is done. This is the whole thing. How do you get the information from 3D? And this is the two or one thing. Okay, so there, how, how many information I can extract from my model? There is a lot. First, the number one is the volumetric, how much oil in the, in the system. Second, a lot of maps, where this oil is, how much oil left, how far from the wells, uh, how good is the porosity, where to drill the wells, all that you can generate from the 3D model. There is tons of information you can generate, and I, I prefer you guys don't worry about it, you worry about when you need. Whenever you need something, ask your geomodeler, can I get it from you or not? Okay? So, 
Because uh, this exercise is very quick, we will not talk about the fault. We assume our reservoir doesn't have any fault. Okay, guys, for simplicity and because of the time is not a lot. And also for the seismic, we assume it's done. And our friend, the geophysicist, gave us one surface. Because the seismic, they pick the surface and they give you to the map of the top of the reservoir or the base of the reservoir. Or sometime, the seismic, they cannot see the reservoir properly, okay? Because it's, the signal of seismic is very weak. What they pick, they pick another horizon very high. Example, in Algeria, if you go to Hasirmal, uh, we cannot see the top of the reservoir because we have a, a shaly sand and after that we have a sand, they look more or less the same, okay? So in Hasirmal, for example, the seismic manigdrushin shufo top ta reservoir. But what we see, if you go above the reservoir, there is a carbonate layer, the D2. Uh, D2 layer, that carbonate is very, very clear on seismic. So in Hasselman, Algeria, for example, all your geophysicists will give you the D2, or the D2 uh, layer, which is far away from the reservoir, but don't worry, I will show you how to use that seismic to get your uh, reservoir map. So we take uh, an example from Canada. Uh, the good uh, thing about Canada, the data is public, okay? The Canadian government make the data public after one year. Everything is public after one year, okay? Wells, logs, production, everything. So you can go and get the data yourself and do the exercise yourself, training for you uh, yourself. So we're taking one example uh, in Canada. And the first thing you do in any model, please guys, get how much data you have. You should know how many wells you have, how many logs you have how many well tops you have, how many seismic surfaces you have. So our objective is to understand the reservoir between Atlas and uh, Counter Base. This is the reservoir we have and it's called Atlas Channel, okay? But for us, our geophysicist could not see the Atlas, it's a little bit tricky. So he gave us the Manvik surface, which is higher. My advice, always add another surface below your reservoir because you have your reservoir, you need a buffer above it and a buffer below it. It helps a lot your seismic, your uh, reservoir engineer guys because they're in drilling simulation. They use it specifically for drilling is very useful. Okay, so the data we have that's what we have as data set. The first thing you should do is well correlation or stratigraphy understanding. Okay, you should always sit with your geologist and show you a panel of cross section uh, from east to west or north to south and see the reservoir and see the tops and see the logs, okay? See the tops and see the logs. And here example, you see the, the gamma ray here and you see the gamma ray how it's changing from the, this one is from south to north and you can see almost is the same or uh, equal to each other. And you see the porosity here. For example, you see in this second one, the porosity is more or less all one block. You see here, no, I can see uh, a tight intervals. This one is low gamma ray. So it's not a shale. Okay. It could be an hydrite or something very tight or a silt layer. It's not gamma ray. It's not shale. But this tight reservoirs later on when I'm drilling or producing my field, they make my uh, uh, separation in performance of the reservoir. So this one will be drained separate than this, produce separate than this. But when we go to the north, reservoir become more or less one, one item, one item, one item. So always you should understand your geological settings. And before you start all the numbers, you when you look, you say, okay, in the south, my reservoir it is split into four layers. I see one, two, three, four. When I go to the north, those reservoirs, they start connecting to each other. So before even you start, you say, okay, in the north, I have a cleaner reservoir. In the south, I have a layered reservoir. Also, before even you look to any extra data, when you look here, you see the thickness is more or less, this is the thickness. From here to here, you see most of the part of the field is stable. But when we went to the north, Sudden, we lost the thickness. You see, lipisur hna naqs ala hada. Therefore, قبل ما تبدأ على بالك باللي في النور الريزيرفوار سيب فيري بروبر ومليح مي لبيسور تاعو نقص. So there, when we go to the north, reservoir thickness is lower. Okay, you don't need 
sophisticated software. Just the color for map, you can know and understand. And this is very important. Please, guys, don't jump into the numbers and click in the software button here and there. Always, you should build an air reservoir understanding, very broad uh, uh, general idea of your reservoir, how it looks in the south, how it looks in the east, what happened in the north, you should know. You don't know, know the number, but you know roughly what's happening in your reservoir. And this is very, very important because we should never start geomodeling without having a clear idea how the, our model looks like. The geomodeling help you put the data together and help you calculate the data, okay? But how it looks and the understanding, you should have it before. So our objective is to understand and model this uh, sand here, from here to here, and it's the same sand. This zone here is buffer. This zone below is a buffer. Our geophysicist friend gave us this one. This is what we got from the geophysicist. Okay, and we will use it later on to uh, propagate down uh, the stratigraphy column. So, uh, geographical model, or always we start with uh, data inventory, what I have as data. Okay, and what I have, there is two there is digital and there is uh, non digital. Okay, we focus on the digital data. But the non-digital data, you always try to remember, okay? Because sometimes you need to go and ask your technician, please, can you digitize that map or please, can you enter those number for me? That's number one. Okay, so after we know all the, uh, the data we have, we should bring all the data in our uh, application, GoCard, Petrel, RMS, okay? We load all the data. And load all uh, what we load the well trajectory, the well logs, the interpretation like uh, porosity, saturation, V shale. If you have a core data, also we load it and so on and so on. Okay, just one second, I will now close the door. Yeah? Sorry, guys. So the first part is loading all the data and loading the well log data and the structural data. Okay, if you have any map from seismic and the well tops and everything in the system, you should have everything in one uh, software. When you are done with the loading, the phase number two is building your structure, the top and the base of the reservoir all together, the fault, if there is fault, you do the zone and you do all the layering, okay? Say so that's number two. Number three is optional, which is if you have seismic data, it's very helpful. Okay, seismic are very, very good data set people they tend not to use, but I advise you use your seismic, use your seismic. So you load the interpretation and you check it against the, the, the well tops and you do a proper depth conversion. As you know, seismic is time. So seismic doesn't tell you First, the first initial, the seismic doesn't tell you your top is 2,000 meter deep. No, it will give you milli, millisecond uh, deep. And you do the depth conversion and that's all done by your geophysicist. Don't worry about it. Your geophysicist always will give you a 2D map with depth on it, not time. Okay? But you need to, to check it and use it as a geomodel. Other part is optional. If you have the facies from the geologists, okay? And you have just maybe, let's say 10% 10, 10 of the wells they have facies and 90% they don't have the facies. You can use your logs and the neural net and big data machine learning to predict the facies for the area where you don't have the facies. The same thing for permeability, okay? As we did yesterday, we showed you yesterday, but that's an optional, okay? When you finish that one, you go and you upscale the data upscaling, I will uh, talk about it later on. When you upscale, now it comes the, the base case 3D model. You build your porosity and permeability in SW uh, 3D model, where you, and from the well location, you interpolate in 3D, and it will tell you how much is the porosity in every cell of your model, okay? 
will try to show you in a moment. When here it's the first one, uh, geo model is done, okay? And 90% of the geo modeler in the world, they stop here. So when the data is done, we transfer this to simulation engineer because the simulation engineer will put, uh, uh, simulate the movement of the fill with, with time. And he needs the 3D model, porosity, SW, and permeability. We give him the model. And when he runs his model, he will compare it to the world had uh, uh, production history data, okay? The world history data. So if our model doesn't match, he will tell us, we will go do adjustment and we work with him. That's why we say reservoir characterization is an integrated uh, study that everyone is part of it, okay? While the simulation engineer is busy building his model and running the first case, you as a geomodeler, you should always run uncertainty. Uncertainty, it's the same like we did for Petrovizic before, Monte Carlo and so on and so on, but in geomodeling, it's always done. In Petrovizic, people, they don't do it. In geomodel, always we do it. Uh, because we wanna decide on the P10, P50, and P94 uh, book in reserve and resources. Okay, so there are two children of the double Lidoni and the Lidoni tag, Jibum, Claude Lidoni tag, the Doni Dupuy, Lilo, Claude Lidoni Strictero, and the Clual Top, the map, the Andek, Wombad, the Andek Sismic, Saham and Expert Problem, and now the Dusian Faz, their model Strictural tax, their reservoir tax, the limit superior, the limit inferior, the base, the Lotuat, the reservoir. ودير الديكوباج تاع ريزرفوار تاعك اوكي ومن بعد دير لانتربولاسيون 3 دي تاع البوروزيتي والاس دبليو والبرميابيليتي وعندك موديل دو باس الموديل دو باس نعطيه لانجينير سيميلاسيون هو لانجينير سيميلاسيون يخدم عليه ولا يلقى فيه دي بروبليم يقول لنا باش نعاودو نموديفيو شويه باش نخدموا مع بعضنا واونترو طون حنا نديرو بليزيور ريزاليزاسيون بليزيور ريزاليزاسيون باش نشوفو لانسيرتيتي نتاعي في الموديل شحال Now, for multiple realization, people, they tell you 100 realization, okay? A lot of geomodelers around the world, they run 100 realization. Believe me, 100 realization is not enough, okay? We are running 100 because we don't have time. If you have time, don't go below 1,000. Don't run below 1,000, okay? In petrophysic, we do 2,000 and above. Geomodeling, if you have time, do 1,000 run at least, okay? And you do your work. So, in case we are using uh, Petrel, okay, the first thing I want to explain, it's not the software, but how the data. Here are all my four wall tops. Remember, Manville, the top of Atlas, the base of Atlas, and the base of the lower shape, tops. The black line is the 2D surface I got from seismic. And this color lines are the wells. What we got from seismic, you see here, for example, you see the surface moving down here. That information without seismic, we don't have it, okay? How the surface is moving here, here, how it's changing here, this bump, this bump here, all this, all this high bump, this is not from the wells, it's from seismic. And that's how the seismic help. The seismic exists everywhere, okay? As a 2D. Now, our objective, is to build the 2D map for this lower section and the base map for uh, the base of the reservoir and the lower shape. Very easy, don't worry about it. We calculate the thickness from here to here. We calculate the thickness from here to here. For each point, calculate the thickness. We generate a thickness map. And after that, the top of the reservoir is equal to my seismic plus the thickness I calculate from here. And this one is this guy plus the thickness I got from here. And this one is the same. So we start from seismic, we calculate the thickness, add it, you have a surface. You add another thickness, you have a surface. You add another thickness and you have a surface. Why we do the thickness, okay? The thickness usually is a stable, doesn't change too much. The structure change too much. We have fold up and down, change too much. But the thickness is usually stable. That's number one. Number two, it's not in this case, but usually the wells stop here. Most of the wells will stop in the reservoir and horizontal are in the reservoir. So the base of the reservoir, you don't have data. You have maybe just few wells, vertical, very old, and that's it. That's why we use the thickness is better 
or using the seismic art, the thickness and so on, you get your surface. So how it's done is very simple. Uh, first, the 3D model, how it's done, you, you, you create your area of interest in 2D. Aerially, I have this limit, okay? And always you take your reservoir and add a little bit around it, okay? Always we try to add area of the water around it, not only the oil. Let's say the oil is here, uh, the area of interest should be bigger. Why? Because simulation engineer, they need to simulate the movement of the water. Always the simulation engineer will ask you for water area, water section. That's why your area of interest is your oil accumulation plus a buffer around it. For this example, we get the thickness of all the three members. Number three, we build the skeleton, which is we take the reservoir, we split it vertically into uh, cubes and uh, horizontally and vertically into cubes. Uh, we start with the horizon, make horizon where we use the seismic. So we have one horizon from seismic. And after that, we take that horizon and we add thicknesses to generate the other horizons for us. Okay. Uh, and that's the steps. So how we do it, that's my area of interest. And this one is the 2D surface Menville we got from seismic. Okay. We got this one from uh, seismic. As we said, we first, we calculate the thickness from Menville to Atlas. And after that, from Atlas to the base of Cantal, and after that, from the gaze of Cantal to Rush Lake. This is the upper shale. This one, my reservoir is number two, and number three is the lower shale, okay? So first, we get the thickness map. Let's get the thickness maps. I'm showing you here Petrel, but it's the same in any software, okay? So first of all, you need to get the thickness for each well, okay? For each well, you take the top, the base, and you calculate the difference. That's your thickness, okay? And that will give you like this, will give you, uh, the well name is somewhere here, yeah? we don't need it. It gives you the X and Y location of the well. And it gives you, uh, this is the midpoint, we don't worry about it. And it gives you the thickness. So the premier etape, we have the top of the reservoir, the strata, on the top, so the top, the top, the top, the difference of the piece. وف اوتوماتيك مو عندك الاكس وي جراغ اللي هي لوندروا تاع البوين تاعنا شذر فور فور ايتش ويل وي هاف اكس اند واي اند وي هاف ا ثيكنس ناو وي هاف بوينت اونلي وي تيك ذيس بوينت اند وي جينيريت ا 2 دي ماب 2 دي ماب از فيري سيمبل اي ام شوين يو هير اولسو بيتريل بات ايتس مور اور ليس ذا سيم ان اني اوذر سوفت وير سام بيبل اف يو ار تو سمارت يو كان بيتر ذان مي يو كان دو ات ان اكسل اوكي وات وي دو هير وي ميك ا 2 دي ماب Our input is the point from the wells, this small points for each well. And we are modeling the thickness, okay? Uh, let me go back here. We are not modeling the depth or why or whatever, we are modeling the thickness. Okay, that's the thickness. This polygon is the area of interest. And you give it a nice name. From Menville to Atlas, that's called Menville, okay? Okay. So that's the main thing. The more important is the... Can you mute your... Uh... Yes, okay. So also very important is how big is the cells, okay? I'm using 100 by 100. Most of the people, they use 100 by 100, but don't worry about it. The cells is the size of the cells should give you at least two to three cells between two wells. Let's say my wells, the distance is 500 meters, okay? If I do 100 uh, meter uh, cell size, it will give me around three cells between my wells, and that's good, okay? You should not have one well here, one well there. Uh, also, you should not have two wells in the same cell. So the cell size is, and depends on how, how big of your model. If you don't know, take it 100 by 100, and that's it. Don't worry about it, it's a good number. For the algorithm, for you guys, always use ISOC or algorithm. There is a lot of algorithm. Don't worry about it. The best one that gives you a very good, accurate result is the ISOC or algorithm. Uh, it's developed. It has a lot of data on it. The only thing I advise you to do is this one, yeah? By default, the algorithm, if you have a thickness from the words, let's say from 20 to 50, by default, the algorithm will extrapolate and uh, on the lower and the high section, it will go, go up to zero, it will go from 50 up to 100 if there is a trend. 
Usually for me, I will tell the system, if my wells are from 20 to 50, don't go too low below 20 and don't go too high above 50. I don't allow it to go crazy, okay? So that's why I'm allowing 5%, yeah? Uh, 5%. Also, the last one, which is the most beautiful thing is, as we said, the thickness of the stratigraphy doesn't change very sharp because when you have your, uh, let's say the deposition system, you have the, uh, the beach and you are depositing sand at the beach, the sand thickness will not change very quickly. Okay, if you have 20, 15, it will not go suddenly 200 meter thick and go back. That's why always the thickness map, you give it a smoothing, you smooth the surface. So one, two, three settings and you have your data. And you see the thickness map of the Menville, the thick, which is the upper shale, the thickness map of my reservoir, and the thickness map of the lower shale. The blue here is zero, it means does not exist, okay? And here is very simple that this reservoir is a channel, is a reservoir channel, a rivière, a rivière, a channel, cut down the strata below. Now the reservoir channel, a rivière, كي كان يخدم الريزرفوار كوبا في لي روش اللي تحتو كوبا في لارجيل هادي ونحاها كاع هنايا اوكي سو ذاتس واي يو سي ذا شيل ثيكنس ذا بيلو ذا لوور شيل از زيرو بيكوز اور ريزرفوار از ا تشانل اند كات داون ذا ريزرفوار اوكي وي ذيس از اور سمول بورشن اوف ذا تشانل اتس بيج اون ذيس اريا بات وي ار فوكس اون اونلي اون اور سكشن اوف ذا مود ناو ذا فيرست ستيب ان 3 دي مودل از يو بيلد يور سكيلت or what you call pillar grading. Pillar grading is simple, is splitting, you take horizontally, split the model into uh, slices, uh, squares or usually squares. Please guys, always use squares, okay? There is a lot of complication in mathematical calculation if it's not square. Try to be square, 100 by 150 by 150. And as we said, the 100 by 100 is make sure you have few cells between two wells, okay? and make sure you don't have two wells in the same cell. So if your wells uh, space or distance is a thousand meter, you can go even 250. But if your wells are 400 meter, uh, 100 is, is better. If you are in the shale gas and your wells are very uh, condensed, you should go even 50 by 50, okay? That's number. And just I'm zooming here, and that's the 100 by 100, okay? So what we did in pillar grading, we split the reservoir horizontally into uh, squares. And here we don't have fault, okay? If we have fault, we can include them, but not for this exercise. And that's what we call pillar grading. When you finish pillar grading, the system will give you a skeleton. This one is above 100, this is below 100, this is zero. It's flat because we didn't do anything yet, okay? It's just skeleton. And it's structure time. It's okay? Now, I'm going Okay? Now, as we said, the, our geophysicist gave us one map. That map, even from the geophysicist, is done properly. We should always fit it to the wall top. Okay? And that's the Menvin. My input is the data from seismic. That's why you see S. And I have to tell the system, if it's not matching the wall top, adjust it to the wall top. And that's the surface. So the skeleton before I did the Menvin. Now, if I did the Menvin, that skeleton will go down and have the shape of the manville. You see the manville here in the bottom and the upper skeleton, the lower skeleton, okay? And that's my skeleton. And now I have one horizon. That's it for the moment from seismic and it's adjusted to wall tops, okay? The second step, as we said, we want to build our stratigraphy below the manville. We have to build the manville chain after that, the, the, the reservoir at last, and after that, the lower shale, okay? And that one, the best method is, you say that I want to build zones below the manville, and I'm using isocore or thickness maps. So you drop your thickness maps here, one, two, three, and you drop your wall tops, one, two, three. You see, you drop the atlas, so the, the manville here, and this is the manville thickness. After that, the atlas and the atlas thickness, counter and after that the counter thickness and after that the lower shale okay why we drop the wall top because we want to make sure that at well location we are matching the wall tops so when we do a perforation in the future we perforate in the exact 
position, not the wrong one. And you see here, when you do that, this is 3D view, one side and another side. Uh, uh, you don't see two horizon here, they're close to each other. One, two, three, and four. You see four horizon, okay? For better view, I personally, 3D if I have a software, but for presentation, I prefer this one. Cross-section, build always cross-section. This is very simple. Build cross-section, look to your reservoir, and go north, south, east, west. Just play with it. Play up, down, east, west, okay? What you see, this window here, فنتر هذه اللي هنا, هي cross-section تانا. والفنتر اللي هنا الكحلة الصغيرة, هذه map. This is a map view. The blue line tells you where is this cross-section. So we are doing a cross-section almost at the north. This is the upper shale. This is the reservoir. And in this section, the lower shale does not exist. Okay, the channel completely eroded. You see a little bit here and here. So what we do is very simple. You just go down. You see, we went from here. And now we are here. And you can see how it happened. The reservoir here is very thick without shale below it. Reservoir become thinner and we start seeing the shale below. It. We go more south and it's more thinner. And even it's very thin in this area here. This area is very thin reservoir. And we start having the shape above it, uh, below it. Okay. And we do uh, also we do the same thing. We go down the, the reservoir south, more south, and you see the reservoir. Now we have the shape, and the reservoir thickness is more or less the same as before. Okay, and we go down. This exercise is very, very helpful. Go up and down, left and east, just structure. Okay, you will understand a lot. And you see the bumps here because our uh, oil contacts is roughly around this value here, okay? So always play with this characteristic here. Now, when we have, we have one layer, second layer, third layer. This is very thick layer. We should split it also vertically into slices. That's what we call uh, layering. And here I'm taking a thickness of two uh, foot, uh, two, sorry, two meter layering. For the layering, there is a lot of option. For the sake of this exercise, let's follow base, okay? If you don't know, follow base, okay? Kifash and copy and decopy or reservoir vertical, can follow base, follow tiba la base, tiba top, dir of nos, ila ma la balik, dir base, okay? Follow base is the most standard one if you don't know, okay? If you know, you can choose other uh, option for uh, uh, having those uh, split into layers. And that's your result. Remember first from horizon and zone, we have one, two, three. Now, when we do the layering, we have a bench here, bench here, bench here. You see, now our model is split into small cubes, small cells. And that's what you call cellular model. Sometimes you hear the word cellular model. It means now instead of one big chunk rock, now, now it's small cells. And those cells are 100 by 100 meter by two meter vertical. Okay, so each block is 100 by 100 uh, by two meter. Okay, let's. When you are done with this, what we call the structural modeling is done. And believe me, with structural modeling, you can do a lot. Even if you reach here, it's very, very helpful. It's very, very helpful. You know that in this section, the reservoir is very high, and you can put your wells here. You know, in this section is very low. Maybe the water is here. So you don't drill here, you drill up here. In this section also it's thick, but maybe it's very low. So, you know, without even porosity, V shale or SW, the structural model, it's already a benefit. Okay. It's a sum of more lah, memma and porosity, will saturation, will V shale, will volume d'argile, had structure tech, deserve fair benefit. Alabelk, Billy had the Zondrual Ali in Hadul, will Rahuna, Londrual Ali. لندر والواطي هذا على بالك باللي الماء راهو تم ما تروحش تفور هنا اوكي مما تدير حتى موديل هذا برك يكفي اوكي this one it has a great benefit to you now when we start to understand how the distribution inside my reservoir and that's what we call just statistical modeling so let's do a brief introduction of just statistic very quick and very brief okay i'm not expecting you to understand all the details one uh, the, uh, the just statistical is very simple, is a branch of applied statistic or mathematics to uh, geological uh, problem, okay? 
uh, and that the development was done very early by Dr. Craig. Uh, one of the uh, the most uh, known method is Craiging, and the Craiging was developed by Dr. Craig or Craig, or who is a South African geologist in South Africa, where they used to drill for and uh, not drill, uh, used to mine for uh, gold. Okay. So he built this Kriging, and that's the first part of just real just statistical uh, method. Uh, but Mr. Craig, his method was so complex that people could not apply, apply it. Okay. Uh, in the late 50s, we have uh, Mr. Francois Matteno, who's a French geologist, took that method and make it simplified and make it uh, quick to calculate. And that's why all the software they use a François Matero calculation. François Matero make that calculation. And uh, François Matero is a French geologist who got a problem with his father. So he quit France and he went and lived where? In Algeria, in, our, in my country, okay? So he was a geologist in Algeria before independence. And after independence, the Algerian government asked him to stay and he stayed and he was the boss for uh, uh, Sonotrack Exploration, up to the late 70s, he was the boss and he was a, a geologist there. So I always joke and say that uh, uh, the geomodeling was just statistical, was born in South Africa and raised and grow in Algeria, in North Africa. Okay, so they're going to, Dr. Krieg, uh, geologist in South Africa, who he developed the method, the method of the method of calculus. فرانسوا ما ترى أن فرنسا اللي كان عايش في الجزائر بس كان عنده بروبلا مع باباه ما عايش في الجزائر وريح في الجزائر قبل الاندبندنس وبعد الاندبندنس وهو اللي ديفلوبها وردها سهلة ومن بعد عاود رجع لفرنسا. so فرنسا ما ترى when he went back to France he built the first university for just statistical student and his student are the people who spread the geomodeling around the world. two of them they went to Stanford University. And in Stanford University, they teach one guy from Canada, Clayton Deutsch, that you may know. My prof is Clayton Deutsch, so it's second generation of uh, François Matera. And that's why you see a lot of software in Geomodern are generated in France because of François Matera. GoCAD is French, uh, the Geomodeling part in Bitrail is French, RMS, the Geomodeling part also is French. So that's applied mathematics to just like, uh, to geology. Uh, uh, We'll do some uh, few uh, definitions, probability or likelihood, okay? Likelihood of an event of happening. Let's say I have a sand, okay, in this well. What is the probability to have a sand in this cell? Okay, that's the likelihood of the presence of the sand. The variance is how far the data from each other, how the dispersion of the data from each other. Okay? A correlation is very important in geomodeling is how related two elements to each other. Let's say how related the porosity with the V-shape, how related the porosity with the permeability, how related the porosity with the depth, how related the porosity from east to west. Let's say the porosity, the geologists tell you that your porosity whenever you go to the north is get better, but your thickness is lower. So we have a correlation, it's good. Even with the, with the direction is good. Uh, anisotropy is when your data is changing with direction. Let's say you go to the north, porosity gets better. Or you go down deep, the porosity gets uh, uh, deeper. In geomodeling, we don't like anisotropy, okay? If there is anisotropy, we need to remove it first. Uh, and that's what we call stationarity. Stationarity is very simple. You say that, let's say uh, your reservoir is 50 by 50 kilometers. And uh, you say, I will take a block of five kilo by five kilo and calculate an average porosity from all the wells in that location. And after that, I move that five kilo around. If the average of porosity is the same, wherever you move, we say that my porosity is stationary. Okay? So the average porosity, in an, it's not changing if I change the area. But if my average porosity is changing, if I take the five kilometer by five kilometer in the north, give me an average of 20. But if I go to the south, give me an average of 15. That's not stationary. And geomodeling, always we remove that. One. And we remove it by a trend. We will not touch it here. It's very easy done. Don't worry about it. Just some definition for you. 
uh, the probability is from the histogram. Okay, Pro uh, probability density function. And in geo modeling, we use the cumulative, so the CDF. Okay, uh, the CDF function that we use in geo modeling all the time. The correlation is the how related two parameters to each other, and you can have positive correlation, which means that uh, parameter uh, y increase with parameter x. Uh, here we have the permeability increase with porosity. Okay. Correlation positive, you can see the Y is X. Okay, example permeability with porosity. A negative correlation, okay, uh, here for example is the correlation of porosity with V shale, okay, and you can see that a negative correlation. Both of them are excellent tool to use. Where is the problem? Is when you don't have correlation. When you don't have correlation, please don't use. Let's say, your permeability with porosity, the correlation, there is no correlation from the core data. Don't use porosity to help you model permeability because it will include a lot of noise. So good, good, bad. This is to be used, to be used, not to be used. Variogram. What is the variogram? That's Mr. Craig in, uh, came with the variogram. The variogram is very simple. It said that if you have porosity of two here, and you go and move a thousand meter, what will be the difference in porosity? Which is simply the variability of the sorry, uh, variability, variability of the parameter with the distance. Okay, if I move horizontally, what is the change? If I move vertically, what is the change? Okay, and also there is a small trick. If the data are very close to each other, in theory, we should not have any difference. But in practice, we see a difference, OK? And we'll explain to that uh, what it means. And from variance, we calculate the variogram, which is you take, let's say, vertically. Uh, the variogram is the range. You see, if I move one kilometer, the variance of the data or change in the data will be like this. If I move two kilometer, three kilometer, five kilometer horizontally, and give me that one. Because we are moving in one direction, the variogram has, has a direction to it. We have horizontal variogram and vertical variogram. Horizontal variogram, we have the measure, which is where we have a very big range and a small range. What is the range? Sorry, I did not explain the range. Whenever we get far, you see the difference is getting higher and higher and higher. After that, the difference will stabilize will become or become noisy. Here we say that they, at this range, after that, the data, they don't have any correlation. Which means, let's say it's four kilometers. It tells you if you have a well here, do not use that well to calculate the porosity of an area more than four kilometers from your well. Because the variogram tells you there is no correlation at all. Okay, and you have the vertical variogram also the same way. The nugget, you cannot calculate from the data, but you can estimate. Because if you have data here, you can uh, draw a uh, fit a model. In the modeling, we have a Gaussian model, a spherical model, and exponential model. You can st do straight line with the ruler, with the linear master, no problem. The theoretical model will extrapolate where the distance is zero. It will tell you a value. In reality, if the distance is zero, the difference in data should be zero. If your data tells you that no, the nugget is not zero, which is always the case, guys, always is not zero. It tells you that you have some event are smaller than the spacing of the data. Okay, let's say you are drilling well every thousand meters. It tells you that sometime maybe a small channel is very small. That channel sometime you hit it, sometime not. The nugget is very simple. It tells you that your sampling or where you put the, the location of the wells, it's not capturing all the variability of the data, okay? Uh, this is my thesis in 1996. So how you get a vertical sampling that will tell you, will make the nugget the smallest possible. And this is how we calculate uh, the variogram on a vertical. It's very easy and it's doable and it's good from well data, okay? You see, this is the porosity log every uh, half foot. You calculate the difference from here to here. 
here to here, here to here, and all of them, and you calculate the average, okay? And that's one point. So if I have one lag, this is the average difference. If I do now second one, two, every two, and calculate. Every three, every four, every five, every 16, every 100, and you calculate and you come up your, your variogram. And that's this example here, you have the positive value 3%, 5, 7, 6, 4, 1, 1, 4. You see your variogram will be like this, like this, and after that, after the range, the third range, the variability is not anymore there and stable. And you can fit this one, they fit a Gaussian model, but you can fit whatever model you want. And it tells you here your range is almost three. So after three, there is no correlation. You see, from one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, six. After that, there is no correlation. Okay, for the variogram, vertical variogram, you can get most of the time very easily from your well data, the petrophysics. Horizontal variogram, my advice, don't waste your time with wells because the wells, the, the, the distance between wells is too big, okay? It's a thousand meter or more. So the variogram from, horizontal variogram from well data, usually you cannot pick it. And if you pick it, sometimes it's very big, okay? My advice is take it from seismic. I will not uh, give you a topic, maybe tomorrow I'll show you one uh, presentation about that. Take your variogram from seismic because the seismic exists every 25 meter, okay? You can get the variogram from, the horizontal variogram from seismic, the vertical variogram from well data, okay? And for the fitting, there is most of the software, they have three, spherical exponential Gaussian. What's the difference? That's the case, okay? Uh, Gaussian is this one. Gaussian, it says that if you move small distance, there is no change in data. Sphere, uh, exponential, if you move a small, the data will change very quickly, okay? And spherical is in between, that's it, okay? Gaussian, it means that your reservoir is changing slowly. S exponential, your reservoir is changing rapidly. Spherical is in between. So, how on the model, what we do, we should upscale the data. Remember, the model is small cubes and small cells everywhere, but they are blank. They're empty, there is no data in them. So the scaling is simply calculate for each cell, the average of porosity from the wells if there is intersection. And that's how it's done. And you see here, wherever we have wells, we have value. Wherever we don't have wells, we don't have value, okay? So here, uh, on calculate the value of each cell, if you have an intersection with appui, if you have an intersection with appui, it has 5 or 6 points of porosity, you can calculate the value of porosity. كما راكم تشوفوا هنا آه وين عندي بوي عندي فالور تاع بوروزيتي وين ما عنديش بوي ما عنديش لي دوني راهي نوار فيت اوكي امتي ذاتس ذا نمبر 1 از سم بيبل دي كول ات لامبينغ اف يو ار كامينغ فروم فرنش سكول اور ابسكيلينغ اور فيري سيمبل كالكيليتين افريج فاليو اوف ذا سيل فروم ذا ويل ديتا اند ذيس سيلز ويل نوت بي تشينج ويل ستي لايك ذيس ات اول ذا تايم وي دونت بريدكت ذيس ديتا لي دوني هادو ما ينجحوش من بعد كي نروحوا للموديل هادو يبقوا دي دوني ريال فيكس ما يفاريوش باسكو جبناهم من لي دوني بوي اللي هما دوني ريال اوكي يو جو اند يو دو يور داتا اناليزيس اند ذيس فاريوغرام داتا اناليزيس يو ديسايد اون ذا فاريوغرام سايز اوكي ذا لاك ديستانس اي ام بوتين 2 متر هير بيكوز ماي ليرينج از 2 يو كان تشينج ات By the way, here you try to change and you do your best till you get a good variogram fit and you fit your variogram here, okay? And you fit your uh, variogram that the way you want and you can change exponential Gaussian. You see which one give me give you, and this one is done visually and manually, which one is better, okay? Don't do the automatic. Most of the uh, algorithm that do automatic fitting is not good. Do it manually, change, move this one up and down, move here and do it uh, manually. Uh, okay, you, you see here, I did not pick horizontal variogram because I couldn't. Well, data has few wells, you cannot pick horizontal. Uh, you pick it from uh, seismic data. Inshallah, I will show you example tomorrow. Now, you go and you start doing your interpolation or just 3D modeling. Uh, we are using uh, Kriging here, and I put fixed value, 3,000 by 3,000. This number could be picked from seismic or could be picked from your geologist. The geologist tells you that the river size is around 3,000 or 4,000. The river is more elongated this one. So you can play with this number. 
This one, you don't worry, you can play with your geologists or seismic people. This one, I picked from the data itself, okay? And you run and it will calculate the porosity everywhere for you. And you see here, it's calculate the porosity everywhere. The blue is very low porosity because this is the upper shale, you remember? This is my reservoir and this one is the lower shale. I remove, I don't need to see the upper shale. I will remove it and show you also, I slice the, 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 the system into 3D, okay? 3D and you can see uh, your uh, interpolated and predicted data and the vertical uh, bars are the real data from the webs. Always try to see real and predicted. So you see if your model is accurate or not. Also, you can do a cross section. Remember the cross section we did before? This is the location of the cross section in the middle of my reservoir. And you can see this is the upper shale. And this upper shale sometimes has some porosity in it. And this is a lower shale. It has a little bit of uh, porosity in it, but the more, most of the porosity exists in my reservoir, which is roughly from here uh, to here. I will uh, stop here, but I wanna show you in uh, Petrel, the system, how it looks very quickly. This is my uh, 3D model, okay? And that 3D model I generate using petrophysical modeling. And that's the petrophysical modeling. You see my porosity. I'm doing uh, petrophysical modeling for the manville and the channel and the base. I focus on the channel. I put my uh, variogram ranges here and there and put my nugget and calculate. And it will give me, I can change. And you can see the change in the the data we see here. Okay, and you can do multiple realization uh, on the system, okay? And that's my uh, 3D model. I always slice the 3D model. Uh, I don't, I like this one, to be honest with you, I like this slicing. There is another way to look to data is you display one slice, okay? You say this because Oh, uh, something I forgot to mention. When you slice your model horizontally, uh, where is it? Uh, this one. When you slice your model horizontally here, what you are doing, you are calculating an I and J direction index. So have I one, two, three, four, five, and J uh, along it. And when you do the vertical, you are doing a K layers. Okay, so this is an I layer. This is a J slice and this is a K slice, okay? Okay, so I prefer the J slice here and you can look at it with your pre-existing data. And usually I display the base of my reservoir. This is the base of my reservoir. Oh, sorry, the vertical exaggeration is too much. This is my channel and I can zoom and I can play this one south and north okay let's say like this okay and you can see the change in all the way up and down after you are done with this property uh, physical modeling you can build your from your petrophysicist data and your mdt you know where is the water the level of the water let's say in this example make contact my water is fixed as minus 260, okay? And that one is this guy. So that's my contact. Let me remove the porosity and display only the contact. The contact here tells you that anywhere blue and below, it's full with water. Anywhere the surface shows green, it's full with uh, hydrocarbon. You can see the same view in the same cross section that we show you, show you before, and that's your cross section. You see, all this is full of uh, hydrocarbon, if it's good porosity, of course, and this one is full of uh, water. Let me just put the surfaces. And here, the contact will tell you everything above is oil, but we know that the upper shale is not good, we remove it. And we know that the lower shale also is not good. We remove it, okay? And that is the area where we have our the best oil. 
If you ask me where to drill or where to perforate, I will go in this area. Simple, not this area, okay? This area is number one, simply because it's high. Yes, this one is high, but this one is far away from the water. And of course, you do the first extraction of the model. You calculate how much reserve you have. So before the reserve, we calculate the pay, okay? What is my pay? For us here, we just say that the pay, if porosity, oh, sorry. If porosity is more than 0 0.1, make it one. If not, make it zero, okay? And it's not too gross. We calculate this very quickly. If porosity more than 10% is good, if less is uh, not good. And you see that's your pay, okay? And of course, you have a pay below the water, but it's not uh, part of the volumetric. So the volumetric is very simple. You give it a name. You say that I have a contact, oil contact. This is my contact. So don't calculate anything below. I go to properties. I have an average porosity. Oh, wait a second. I have an average. Oh, sorry. Just one second. Change the name. I have an I have a porosity and I have a pay. For SW, we don't have SW, for example. You can put it fixed. Say that I have a 0 0.2 water saturation, okay? So 80% oil. And hit run. It will calculate for you how much reserve in the entire field. Uh, one second, I want to show the report. And uh, you show your report, you say, show me, for example, none. You say, show me what is the total rock volume in case that's some time you need. And show me the, the pore volume and show me how much hydrocarbon I have, okay? And that's your total rock volume in million cubic meter. This is the million cubic meter of pore volume. Oh, sorry, this is a thousand, it's not a million. And this is how much hydrocarbon you have in the system. You can change the units, bar and whatever, there's no problem at all. You can change it and you have how much you have. Another one, and the last thing I wanna show you is, uh, uh, it's there, it's there, you can generate an oil map, how much oil I have for every location, okay? And that one, it's done here. It's already done for us. And this is my map. And I can display this map in any 2D window, okay? Uh, let me remove this and display this map. I I try to fix the color for the map because the color is uh, sometimes not a good one. And let's remove all the lines, just keep the color, okay? And here you are. This is showing you where you have the best location with the, the thickest oil and where you have the lowest quality area with the thinnest oil. And you can now plan your wells correctly in the exact location. I would stop here. And thank you for your attendance and your question are more than welcome. Hello. Thank you, sir, for your presentation and your time. For all the participants, I hope you were able to take as much information as you can. Now we'll move to answer your question. So feel free to write, to write it down. So any question regarding the quick look or the zoom modeling guy, everything is welcome.
We'll wait while the participants write their questions. So while we are waiting, uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll do more on the geomodeling. Well, I, I have a couple of presentations. I will try to fit them with time. I want to hope I show you some good stuff tomorrow uh, that will help you on your day to day. I would say from now, sorry, guys, because uh, the time is not a lot and the information is so big. So I'm trying to give you only the one you need for your daily uh, experience as a reservoir engineer. Uh, and please uh, don't worry about the complication of the formulas. The most important is you understand your reservoir. I know that this area is better than this area, okay? I know that when I go and drill higher, it's better than drilling lower. Uh, I know that this area, the shale is giving us headache with the frack or with the water or whatever. So that's the most important is the, the global understanding is the key. Any question, don't worry. Ask Petrovizic, geomodeling, no problem at all, guys. Sir, there is a question from the first session. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, what is the relation between detector measures and electron density? This one, we uh, we could not understand the question if the person who asked is try to elaborate more. Again, uh, Shahla? Uh, what is, what's the relation between detector measures and electron density. Uh, we, we explained, but uh, the question is not clear, sensitive. If the person who uh, asked the question, he can elaborate more, it will be uh, very good. Uh, I don't know about it. Because the electronic density is the density related to the, uh, measured by the density tool. So the density tool is measuring how many electrons you have and converting that one to electron density. The electron density is similar to the weight density. If you take the rock and you weight it, uh, that also is the, the density, the normal density we have. And those two density, they are almost equal to each other. Now, the sensor detection is detecting uh, gamma ray measurement coming back from the formation. So we bombard the formation with uh, very high energy gamma ray, and we receive the very high energy gamma ray, not the very low, the very low we give us another measurement, which is the path. We measure the very high gamma ray, and we convert this uh, count, which is how many uh, gamma ray radiation came back, this count uh, converted to electronic density. And the electronic density, practically, it's equal to the density we know about the physical density. Inshallah, this one will uh, help. So we are measuring uh, gamma ray measurement. And we, got, we measure the very high energy gamma ray. Because when we bombard the formation with very high gamma ray, the, dense, the gamma ray go inside the formation, hit and bombard all the stuff and come back. Some of it come back with high energy. Some of it will come very low energy. The high energy will be used to calculate the, the, the density, the rho b. The low energy will be used to calculate the path. Photoelectric, uh, uh, which we did not talk about, the path is related to the matrix. If you have uh, limestone, it's uh, four, I think. If you have sandstone, it's 1.8. If you have dolomite, it's 4.5 or five. So uh, if you have shade, it's 3.3. The path is you use to know what kind of lithology we have. That's the low energy gamma. The high energy gamma, it's used to calculate the electronic density. And that electronic density is converted to density. Any other question? Uh, I think there is no question. Okay, so no problem. So you can remember your question after you see the session. And tomorrow is our last session with me. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer any question regarding the four days tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do, uh, we talk about uh, permeability. We will talk about also the use of seismic in the geomodeling. And if we have time, we'll do uh, uncertainty modeling on the seismic. Uh, or maybe we'll do model extraction. 
one of the two. I will try to think which one is good for you as a reservoir engineer. And thank you very much. Thank you, Khaled. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Barakallahu alaikum, ya shabab. I'd like to remind you that today's session will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. You might want to check that out for your quiz. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow with the same unit and the same speaker as well. Goodbye. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.